How's it going guys? Vincent here from the Creative Dojo. Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about a new Red Giant Universe plugin called Universe Heatwave. This is actually a plugin that I created myself and I'm gonna show you some of the features of it today in this video here. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go to a layer, new adjustment layer to create an adjustment layer for our Heatwave. We'll call it Heatwave. And to apply it, we'll go to Effect, go down to Universe Distort and apply the Heatwave plugin. And as you guys may have guessed, this plugin creates distortion or heat waves due to heat. So right off the bat, you can see that we kind of have this really nice, hazy, distorted, kind of rippling look. Um, you know, it makes the scene look a lot more intense, a lot more hot and then, you know, fierce and more dramatic. And by adding heat wave, you can kind of change the environment to make it look a little bit more in stream and to kind of give an environment of heat here. So that's pretty cool by default. Let's go and take a look at some of the settings here. Now it's easier to see what's going on if you change the output mode to something else. So right now we have the output mode set to final image. We can set it to distortion to see the distortion map or the blur. And we'll talk about the mask and mask overlay mode a little bit later, but let's go back to the distortion map here. And I'm going to go and increase the heat intensity just to see the map a little bit nicer. So basically the heat wave plugin will distort your compositions based on this internal grayscale map right here. So by default, the heat wave plugin actually sets the flow direction to 90 degrees, which means that the heat wave will actually be distorting upwards in an upward direction. But we can always change that using our angle controls here. So we can actually just change this to something else. And then we have our heat wave flowing in that direction. So on and so forth. We can make it uh, you know, vertical, horizontal, diagonally. Doesn't really matter here. So that's the flow direction. We also have the flow speed, which controls how fast the heat waves moves in that direction. So if we crank it up to 100 and do a ramp preview, and as we can see, that really increases the speed of the heat wave. Probably not very realistic, but you have the option to slow it down or increase the speed. We also have the blur amount, which we'll go over a little bit later. We also have additional distortion settings here. So we have the heat size, which actually controls how big the ripples are. So we can actually decrease it to create smaller ripples, smaller micro distortions here, or increase it to make really large ripples. We also have a detail scale right here. So we can actually add more detail to the ripples, make it a little bit more fine tuned, more organic. And we have the overall heat detail scale. So we can add more detail if we wanted to, micro details, or we can make it more fuzzy, maybe larger, softer ripples and distortions here. So we have the options right here. That's pretty cool. I'm just gonna go ahead and reset this. And you know, maybe we'll change the heat intensity to let's just say 30 so you can kind of see what's going on in the video here. So next we have heat blur, which essentially controls the amount of blur that you see kind of hazing over the lens here. So if I just kind of scrub through this, maybe if I increase the blur amount to maybe a higher value, maybe 40. You can kind of see the, the kind of haze, kind of blur on the screen, you kind of get this from really, really intense heat. Maybe if you're wearing glasses or maybe goggles or something like that, you can kind of see this really heat distortion uh, kind of blur going on. It really adds the intensity to the environment here, kind of like you're in a hot oven or something like that. So that is the blur options. Um, we can actually switch to the blur map. And under the heat blur settings, we can control how large the blurs are, as well as how soft they are with the feather amount. We also have, again, the same similar detail amount. So we can have really, really detailed blurs and, you know, scale the blurs or scale it down to simplify it. And we also have a blur quality, which controls how accurate, but also how fast the blur renders. So usually the fast mode will actually render pr pretty appropriately with realistic settings. But we also have a more accurate Gaussian blur, which will actually blur it a little bit nicer, but it will take a little bit longer to render. So usually I set it too fast. And let's go back and switch to the final image. And as you can see, if I just reset this, maybe increase the intensity to 25, maybe uh, decrease the size to around 85. And, you know, just play around with the blur amount to maybe 30 and speed to maybe 55 and just do a quick RAM preview. And as you can see, we get this really nice, intense heat wave, really sells the environment, really adds another dimension and more emphasis to the heat in the environment here. I also wanna emphasize that this plugin can be used for more than just kind of flame-based heat. You can actually use this for stuff like energy and plasmas and you know, 
other things like maybe the jet engine exhaust and stuff like that. It doesn't need to be like an open flame or like lava or something like that. Um, that's why we have different wave types here. So if I switch to the distortion map here and increase the intensity to 100, we can actually change the wave type to something like maybe billowed. This is more appropriate for more smoky, flamey, whiskey kind of distortion from flames and smoke and stuff like that. And then we have another mode called ridged, which is more of a plasma kind of wispy, more of like maybe for energy, kind of sci-fi looking distortions. Uh, you know, maybe not for flames, but maybe for energy or, you know, some kind of cosmos or outer space looking distortion uh, for this kind of wave type. But by default, this is the standard wave type here. So if I lower down the heat intensity to maybe let's just say 40 and switch it back to the final render, this is the default view. This is the billowed, which is a little bit more detailed, but more ripply, kind of uh, more intense. And then we have the more wispy, rigid, kind of cosmic energy kind of ripple here. And then we also have the heat bias, which is kind of like the threshold balance of the whole effect here. So we can actually increase it and decrease it to kind of get different looks. So let's go ahead and switch to the second compositions I have set up here where I already have heat wave applied to an adjustment layer. And you know, sometimes you don't want distortion throughout the whole composition. Sometimes you just want to isolate the distortion to a certain region or a certain area, maybe a jet engine or maybe this kind of hot plasma energy machine right here. We actually have options for that in heat wave. So instead of manually drawing mass on adjustment layers and feathering it out, masking it out and doing it in After Effects, we actually have a built in mask option within the plugin here. And we have some basic shapes that you can use. You can either use an ellipse, a rectangle, or actually use a layer to isolate the mask here. I'm gonna choose an ellipse. It's pretty straightforward. It's going to create an ellipse invisibly in the composition. You can't really see it, but if we go down to the output and switch it to the mask, this is where the actual mask is right now. If we go to mask overlay, it will actually overlay the mask over the actual image, which is pretty helpful if you wanna see the image and the mask area. I'm gonna switch it to the mask output right here. And here we have the option to adjust the position of the, the mask here. We can increase the point A and point B to kind of stretch it out. We have the radius, which will expand the whole mask a little bit. And then we have the feather size, you know, on how soft the mask is. So we'll set it to maybe 80. We'll decrease the radius to maybe 10. And then we'll just pull this down and pull this one up. And then we'll switch to the mask overlay to see where this generator machine is. And we'll just make the distortion right above this kind of machine here so that we kind of get this nice rippling distortion to kind of get a sense of heat below this kind of turbine generator here. And we'll set it to final image. And if we do a quick RAM preview, and as you can see, you get this really nice rippling heat wave effect, kind of this energy heat wave distortion in this confined region using the mask options. And of course you have different shapes such as rectangle as well as using a layer reference for that, a black and white reference. But that's pretty much it for the mask options and that's pretty much it for the whole Heatwave plugin. Um, and you know, it's a fairly simple plugin, but I think it's a pretty handy distortion plugin that you can use instead of using displacement maps. So it's pretty cool and it's part of Red Giant Universe. So that's pretty much it guys. My name is Vincent Nguyen. Have fun.